Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video about the uh, coal destroyers specifically because someone had asked about that. And I think they're they're talking about that there recently were buffs or there may be some kind of anniversary again uh, event that is uh, providing resources uh, such as coal to uh, help you grind and uh, attain these ships. So uh, let's take a look at them. I actually think this might be enjoyable and then I'm recording this live. Um, or uh, just no editing, really, uh, outside of just skipping to uh, where I'm quiet, uh, where it's loading screens. I'll skip through that. But honestly, I'll just play these ships and just give you my real-time reaction to it as I'm recording. And uh, we'll see how it goes. And this will be my first time actually doing this, so this will be pretty, in pretty interesting. So I'm only going to focus on tier... 10 and tier 9 okay so the reason why i like playing the higher levels obviously that's what people try to attain tier 9 and above i think is fun i don't like tier 8 and below it just seems kind of mundane right now i know clan battles is in tier 8 and i'm not really enjoying it really really honestly because in the destroyer kind of role tier 8 it eh, just doesn't cut it cut the mustard for me and i actually enjoy the tier 9 uh style a lot lot better so let's take a look at these and i'll focus mainly on the ones i have i don't have the halford the Gronagon is a friesland so we can play the friesland Let's see if it's on here. Friesland. It should be. Actually, technically, Friesland should be. Actually, it was free XP, I believe. So I'll play the Friesland just to substitute the Groningen. But Halford is essentially the kind of like the Fletcher. But again, I don't think it's that great. It's the only gimmick is, is because as an attack aircraft. Okay. I'm not all about that. And of course, Z44 has really nothing. I looked at it and it just doesn't seem anything good about it, in my personal opinion. I, I'd rather play something else. Uh, the Z44 just. Uh, let me. Let's click on it. Like, what does Z44 have? I mean, single barrel, single barrel guns. Uh, seriously, uh, really, yeah, I don't like that at tier nine. Yeah, low torpedo damage. The detectability is great, but it's just a basic destroyer. Smoke and engine booster. Wait, what kind of gimmick does this really have that I requires me to invest that much um, time and energy in? And of course, the Jaeger. I thought about spending the balloons on it, and maybe even maybe coal, but. Quite honestly, my personal opinion, this is just my opinion, okay? I think the Holland does a better job at it because, yes, the torpedo reload is a better on the Jaeger, but I can get the torpedo really down to almost a minute um, in the the uh, Holland if you build for it, and the torpedoes go just as fast, 95 knots or greater if, uh, if that's what you can do. 95 knots is more than enough for me, and it just shoots 10 torpedoes as opposed to 12 in the Jaeger. So uh, actually, how many torpedoes come out of the Jaeger here? I mean, let's take a look at it. Uh, torpedoes. Yeah, 12. So you got 12, right? As opposed to 10 uh, on the Holland. And the reload, uh, what is the reload here? 85 seconds. So that's not bad, you know? So that's what I, so I'm saying, like, I think it's, you can play the Holland a lot better. And at least the guns are good on the Holland, right? The guns on this thing are awful. So, so people say don't shoot in the Jaeger. Now, the only, I would say, significance is the... You got 6.7 concealment, which you can get this down really, really low on the uh, the Jaeger. Uh, Holland's uh, detection is 6.0, so that's just as good. I, I think it's, uh, if you build for it, of course, I think it's fine, and you get heals on it. The Jaeger, you don't get heals, and the survivability is awful. The armor's like this, basically. It's small and nimble. And yeah, I don't feel like uh, the Jaeger is worth it, in my opinion. And then, again, some people have played it. Like, that's great. If you like it, awesome. Uh, for me, it just does me alone. I, I just don't... I don't think it's that great. I'd rather just play Holland, right? And they got you got no AA on this thing. At least the Holland has AA, right? Look, 16 rating. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, fire range is terrible, obviously. And what was the other thing about the Jaeger? Yeah, it just doesn't. I just like I said, I don't want to spend time, energy, and resources on something I can just play in the Holland. I mean, Holland, I think honestly does a better job uh, for what I'm looking for. So again, that's my thought. That's why I don't have the Jaeger and just spend money on it. Like I said, I can just grind the tech tree line and just get a Holland. We just play the Holland, right? So I think Holland's better than Jaeger. That's my personal opinion. All right. So let's go right to it. Let's talk about. And let me take a screenshot of this so I can remember these things because I'll have to go back and forth. So let's start off with, let's start working our way backwards here. Start working with the Sherman. Okay, so let's, let's play let's play around with the Sherman. Uh, and we'll just play randoms. Uh, we're not going competitive, okay? Now, these ships obviously perform differently in competitive, way, way different. And most of these ships, I'll have to argue that I don't really see in competitive that much. Like Sherman's, I don't see. Marceau, definitely, I see. It's the highest DPM in the game. See, highest damage per minute. Uh, Trump, I rarely see. De Bazan, I see. I rarely see. Hayate, I may see once or twice. Don't see Nutrishimi. I've tried it out. Kabarovs, I've seen. I use Kabarovs in clan battles just for fun, but I don't see anybody that's really taking it seriously, <laughs> really, really seriously to ever do it. And the black, of course, is the black. Uh, we can play that in ranked. 
So let's take a look at the Sherman. So let me go ahead and select destroyers. Uh, doing tier 10 right, American and the Sherman. So here are all the destroyers that I have, and I believe the coal one was the Sherman. I'll just put my basic build on it. Uh, th there's different builds you can do. I'm just going to do the basic gunboat. Now, the, this is thing was built for range, honestly. You're just spamming from range, but I was just building this for fun, just for DPM. So I'll just show you how I play it, and uh, we'll, we'll get started on to see how it goes. And I'll probably skip through parts like this where it's boring. Oh, it load, loaded pretty quickly there. So let's get right to it and see how we do in the four Shermans. Oh, hope you guys are doing well today. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, bell button below. On our way to 4,000 subs. Uh, if you see value in the channel, can't thank you guys enough. As, uh, leave comments. Uh, if you hate things I say, if you like things I say, if you li like things you see, like you don't like things you see, I'll, I love it. I mean, it, it, it really helps you grow. I take everything with um, you know, a, a different lens because, what, quite honestly, I want to see all perspectives because I'm, I'm not right at everything. Of course not. But I always always take an opportunity to learn. Sometimes you lose, sometimes you learn, right? So they always learn from you know other people's perspectives with respect, and of course you know take everybody's opinion so that you may. Uh, you, I learned a lot, especially being in the military. I've learned so many perspectives, especially working with different units and uh, working with different nations and so forth. That people didn't bring different perspectives on life. So I always. I always welcome them, okay? So don't feel like you have to apologize or if you think you're hurting feelings or whatnot, as long as you're respectful about it. I mean, why not? I'm respectful to you. Let's have fun and let's grow. And again, this is just a game, okay? This is a fun hobby that we love having a discussion about and it brings people together. Great. So if we're going to bring people together, let's make the best of it. So right off the bat, uh, what am I doing here in a Holland? Uh, I'm sorry, it's a uh, Sherman. Uh, how am I playing this thing? Uh, I am playing it like... Not necessarily a DD hunter, but that's why RPF. And someone asked, "Why do you do you put RPF on all my destroyers?" At first, I didn't, but um, it depends on which particular destroyer uh, requires it. And majority of the destroyers I play do require it for situational awareness. Because why? Uh, it's good to know, and especially it's constantly running. Look, it's constantly giving me information rather than some other perks only work uh, if it's activated, right? If you do something to activate it. So my personal opinion, I, I actually like to have something that's always working. See, it's shifted there. That's giving me information. Now, that, why is that information so important? It tells you where to steer your ship. It tells you where to go on the battlefield because if you didn't know where to go, then you're just going blind and you're not making the, the best educated decision possible. So right off the bat, uh, we got smoke in front of us. Now, I, like, I don't like the torpedoes on the Sherman. Look at that. Single launch. That's awful. Single launch torpedoes are terrible, but sometimes I get lucky with these things, okay? Anyways, I, SAP is the primary focus on the Sherman. It does a lot of damage, you can see right there. Not the fastest shells, pins 36 mils. That's more than enough you need. Notice, again, I keep my guns facing in the direction of the threat. That's why I think situation awareness is really great. Keeps your weapon systems pointed in that direction. As if so, you don't have to wait for... Uh, turret traverse time and that's bad as a good destroyer player you're always analyzing what are you playing up against so i'm going against marceau's gearings minigumas fletcher's two radars wooster minister uh, edgar actually three minotaur probably has one and cold is a machine gun oh sevilla is another one sevilla is another race so we have a lot of radar and that's a good destroyer player will actually go out there and research the battlefield map and see what you're going up against and do not nowadays don't push a threat unless you know what's going on uh, and you have to have the situation to know, like, hey, do I push this flank? I don't know where these guys are at. I don't know where the radar's at. Let's figure that out first before we start engaging, right? Okay, so um, I got some support here. I'm going to go up and see if I can spot a little bit more. Now, turn, the turning ability of the Sherman, pretty darn wonky, pretty slow. Not as good as the other American destroyers. I like gearing's maneuverability a lot better. I wish it was like that. You notice we have three guns, but the reload at 1.3, so single barrel, hey, that's the best you could do. Otherwise, it'd be way overpowered if this thing had double barrel guns, so six, like what, total of a six guns? Yeah, that would be overpowered. Notice the RPF is still showing behind this island right there, so I'm keeping my uh, focus on that. My my team is hopefully, look, they got an Edgar and a Minigar, Minotaur over there. That's two of the same ship basically right there. And I'm not going to mess with that. And they got radar probably. They got to Schlieffen. I'm holding this flank right here. I'm just kind of loitering around, seeing what's going on. Okay, here we go. There's a Colbert. See, good thing uh, I didn't fire or engage because that thing would have melted us. See, it's always good to know, like, hey, where are these threats at? Always analyze the situation kind of figure out, like, hey, before I take a proper action, like, where are the threats at before I start making an educated guess or decision? Now, normally, a Sherman would be a spamming boat right here, but I only got two smokes, so I kind of want to use them where I can maximize the effectiveness of what I'm doing here. I'm out here spotting for my team. Another good destroyer player is out there spotting, torping, 
uh, capping, obviously, but I, I got my small one over there. Uh, normally, I would pair up with the small one, but uh, I think he kind of egressed back to the center. Otherwise, this flank would have caved uh, had I not held it off a little bit. So I think Colbert is the closest target right now. Okay, Colbert is a threat to us, so I don't think I want to play around with him. So let's see. Ooh, there, there's the other. There's that destroyer we were worried about right there. That's what I was worried about. All right, Minigumo goes down on the other team. All right, seems like this game is kind of a stalemate because nobody's pushing forward. Look at our team. Look at our team zone. Actually, going out and capping spots here. Unfortunately, we are unable to be effective. Okay, Colbert is actually pushing in. Now let's see if we can engage this guy. Now we have no support. We lost our battleship. We lost a Kremlin. That's not good. Uh oh, Fletcher's coming out. Let's see what's he gonna do. Let's take a look at what the Fletcher's gonna do over here. Okay, so good job. I don't know why the Fletcher like pushed that much, but pushing a, a small one is really, really bad. But oh me and my goodness, he got torpedoes and he blasted our Minotaur. Holy mackerel. Come on, Smalley, you can beat a Fletcher. Always eliminate destroyer first. That's your priority, right? Look what look what a what, look what one little destroyer can do to a cruiser. Come on, radar up. There you go. See, small one's so powerful because of the radar. I like the small one a lot. Okay, he's dead. Thank goodness. Okay, so now what are we doing here? We're going to hold this flank and make sure nobody else flanks uh, flanks our team over here. I'm just playing conservative. We got two points. We don't have to push technically. Like, look at this. We got 945 on the clock. We're good. Colbert is being Colbert. He's just sitting behind an island. Yep, he needs intelligence. That's why I got to go out and spot. So I'll tell him, okay, that's what I'll do. See, majority of their battleships are way in the back here, so... Ooh, do, oh, man, my torpedoes almost got him. Look at the power of the <laughs> single launch torpedoes. Sometimes you get a lucky hit. I don't know. All right, Minotaur spotted. There, there's that radar. See, there's that mod I told you about. Like, I know if, if that Minotaur has radar, it tells me at least 10 kilometers what it looks like. And they're, they are overpowering Bravo, so or Charlie here. So I'm going to just hold and see if I can get this Colbert spotted to help my team out. There he is. Ooh, nice Wooster shot right there. Yamato goes down. Ooh, we spotted the good old Colbert. Now, we can't engage him because if he if we engage, we reveal our position, and he's going to just blast us, right? So we're going to see if we can get one of our ships to actually maybe fire a you know, penetrating salvo here. Uh, anything? Nobody's looking at him? All right. So he knows we're here. He's just not sure where exactly. I have nobody to spot for me either. See, so Yoda's too far away. Smallin's over there. So we'll wait till they engage a little closer. So there's nothing wrong with being patient, okay, to see a battle develop. I know that his that Colbert's detection's 9.8. So as long as I stay 9.8 within, I, I keep him perma-spotted. So he knows we're here. So we're kind of... But see, by me doing this, I'm actually taking the Colbert out of the game because he can't really do anything because he's worried about me. And that takes one ship, one less ship that they're dealing with over at Charlie. See what's let's see what this uh, Colbert. Sorry, this is kind of boring, but this is the nature of the game these days. Sometimes, look at these torpedoes. Maybe this is a video about how crappy these torpedoes are. Okay. Oh, there's the gearing. I told you. See, that's why we didn't want to spot. We didn't want to blast this guy. Otherwise, he would have been. All right, here we go. All right, we're gonna take the fight to the enemy. Right. All right. Look at the gun. Look at the gun reload. They're now realizing. Oh my gosh, there was a Sherman on our flank the whole time. Now our, their attention's on me. Dude, we can take out this gearing. This would be awesome. Okay, now he's a, now his attention's focused on us. We're gonna pop smoke, and this is all this is all we can do at this point. Ooh, finally, gearing's perma spotted. Now we can eliminate this gearing. Nobody's spotting for us. Okay, we're going to have to get out of here. All right. This is all you can do at this point. So now we took two ships off the map right there. So the distraction of us right there. Now he's just going to blind fire. So we took two ships away from our friendlies, but unfortunately, I believe our friendlies are going to lose this game, actually. They're actually blowing it because well, look what's happening here. The Satsuma's running the back. Sevilla's running away. Laurie is over here. I mean, what's going to happen is our team's going to chase and then they're going to die. I mean, I already know what's going to happen just by looking how this is developing and I'm the only one over here. I took two ships away and I almost killed the gearing and I got the Colbert. So all I can do now is run and their gearing is going to just perma-spot me and not fire. So this at this point, we're in the back of the map. There's nothing we can do. They're in our spawn. 
Uh, but you could see basically this is how a Sherman plays and just how I feel about it. it. I mean, there's really not many gimmicks other than the fact that it's just got the really fast firing sap guns and smoke. That's that's pretty much the bread and butter of this ship, and that's all it really does. Um, outside of that, it's still fun, though. I do enjoy it a lot, but nowadays with the, the way the radar is, there's CVs now, submarines, the Sherman's too slow. Look at the, my top speed is 35.6 knots, so it's a slow kind of a gunboat um, platform that just sits there and smoke and supposed to spam. So again, if that's your style of gameplay, this is the ship for you. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't do very well hunting down destroyers, and it's kind of, uh, like you see, the gameplay is just not not as enjoyable and anymore now the days that of so much radar, so much cruiser or uh, um, uh, CVs, and, and of course, submarines are faster than me. So me chasing down, and like a lot of cruisers can chase me down. So quite honestly, I think this is, um, eh, it's not what it used to be. I'll, I'll just have to give you that. Okay, so something, the gearing is out there now, rolling around that way. And I don't have any smoke. Oh, might as well just end this game. There's the gearing right there. So will somebody please shoot the gearing? Come on, just kill him. One shot. Oh, thank goodness. All right, now we can go back. Now we, at least we have an idea. We can go back in and figure out where the, the Colbert is at. Yep, I told you. See, if you chase the team, especially, like, look, I mean, th this guy's out of the game. The Satsuma is already running away. Like, he can't do anything. Lawyer is also running the back of the map. They can't cap. They can't do anything. You might as well just hold the caps and win the game at this point. I know it's boring, but what more can you do? I mean, is battleship, this is battleship gameplay at its best, right? Yeah, I should have paired up with a small one to keep them alive. Like I said in my last video I sent, if you don't keep your destroyers alive, the game just falls apart. Okay, now notice the other team doesn't have any destroyers left. So I would say probability is they should lose, right? But unfortunately, the rest of our big ships are also dying as well. And that's another factor. If you start losing too, too many ships, there's only so much a destroyer can do. It can't carry games like all the time, you know? See, RPF is so important. It tells you exactly where the, uh, the closest enemy target is so you can keep your eye in that direction and make sure that, you know, it's not just a blind side. So overall, what do I think of the Sherman? I think it's a great um, spammer. Uh, that's pretty much all it's really good at. As a destroyer, hunter, killer, um, as a, uh, like, look, this Colbert is defending. What am I supposed to do against Colbert? I mean, outside of smoke and firing, he's got hydro. He can push my smoke. Uh, he doesn't have torpedoes. Um, all I have is two torpedoes. whoop de doo I, this is all I can do, really. Um, but it's all about having fun, right? Yeah, Kitty Kaze goes down. Yeah, this game is pretty much over. So bad, bad example of this game. But again, I'm just doing live reaction replays of it just to get you through it. So um, concealment's kind of poor. Uh, 6.5, not the greatest. So if it was lower, maybe uh, it'd be a better DD Hunter killer. But it doesn't do very well in that regard. It only gets about two smokes standard and about three hydros. Hydro goes out to five kilometers. Defensive A is trash, whatever. You can't, you can't depth charge submarines in this thing because why? You got to chase it down. And look at our top speed. Look, I'm going 35 knots. I've seen the, the submarines beat destroyers going this slow okay so it's not a good effective use of anything and like i said uh the torpedoes single launch not really effective might as well just shoot this guy and get this over with now here, here's the example of the firepower this thing. imagine what you could do if you had a constant firepower being able to just blast this guy and no, without being shot at or in smoke, right? Now, I'm not using smoke because I know he has hydro. I just want to get this game over with. But there we go. But that's my thought on the Sherman. I mean, it is fun for that spamming role. Uh, but, you know, outside of that, what else is it good for? It's it's a very difficult ship to play. It requires a very high learning curve on it. And it doesn't perform better than, I would say, a lot of other ships that are, are um, I, would, uh, I would consider better. So, yeah, that's the uh, Sherman. It is available in the Armory for coal. So you guys obviously have seen that, uh, understand it. But um, let's take a look at some other ships. Okay, destroyers. All right, we already looked at Sherman. Let's take a look at uh, Marceau. Okay. Let's take a look at Marceau and see how good that one is. Everybody loves Marceau, right? Well, and why is it so powerful? Man, this thing is still the most powerful destroyer, I believe, in the game. Um, the one I'm using to build right here is uh, you can go long range. I do have a build for long range. I've, I've focused more on these kind of that 
close quarter engagement battle where you're just focusing on DPM. Now I could add this as well, but that would have to give up RPF. And again, I've always said nowadays I'm noticing RPF is a lot better than having reload because it's good to have situational awareness of the battlefield. So we'll go ahead and play one round with the uh, Marceau and see, you know, why it's so powerful and how effective it is. And this is just me playing it randomly. I could die right off the first minute here if I'm doing something stupid, but I'll play as conservative as I can and just tell you my thoughts and tactics on it. All right, we're loading up here. And uh, I'll put chapters in the video if you guys need to skip past this. Again, you can always hopefully fast forward if you, I don't know. Let me know, guys. I have premium YouTube, but the, does the standard basic version of YouTube allow you to fast forward? Uh, someone let, in the comments let me know about that. But yeah, that's just me. All right, so I am the, oh my gosh, I'm the only destroyer over here. I See, I hate matches like this where there's only two destroyers because then you're so fo reliant upon and focused on, right? You got to do pretty much everything. It's good that I'm in a Marceau because I'm so fast. The, the, what is the key bread and butter of this thing? It's fast. You can get across the map so quickly in this thing. It's like a jet. And I think I, someone just did a video about having the captain... Um, the captain I have armed right now, like I think if you take potential damage uh, a certain amount, you get better speed. Apparently, there was a, such a fun video on it. I think somebody went mock like five in the thing. It was going literally a thousand six hundred knots in them club bear, I believe. And I think it's because of the buffs that you get um, as you're taking potential damage. You get these extra buffs, and they kept buffing it. I think it's like a, a, a glitch or something in the game where it just kept giving him so many buffs, and he started going like a thousand six hundred knots. It was hilarious. He was like all over. He was like a speedboat, like a UFO, literally a UFO flying all over the map. But I digress. That's not the point of the video. But you know, look at the speed, man. I'm getting up to 55 knots. Clabert does the same thing. Essentially, is the same hole and everything like that. You get French saturation, good gun reloads. Right? I love the gun reloads. But 808 meters per second, kind of like the Cassard guns, like we talked about earlier. Damage is okay, but it relies upon having four sets of double barrel guns, eight guns total, 7% fire chance, 21 mil pen. So very, very good uh, guns for what I need to do with it. Concealment's poor at 7.0, so you're going to get spotted from the moon, but all French destroyers seem to be that way anyways, except for the Kassar getting that 6.1. Neptune, we know he has radar. Look at that. Already, I already know his radar. Look, I look at the mini-map, boom, I already know what to do, where to avoid. If you want to study it more, you can look at, hey, what's his radar at? Neptune, click on the guy, highlight the thing. It's 10 kilometers, which uh, checks with my mini-map. And, of course, I have a threat right here. Ooh, a lot of ships over here. So I have a threat right there. I know where he's at. I'm going to give my team a signal, hey, there's something right there. Again, I'm going to hold. Now, the Marceau is very good at running away and dodging. So I'm just going to sit here and hold as long as I can. I've got backup. All right, I, my, my next goal probably will be to get um, Charlie Cap. So here comes Torpedoes. Always reverse in because then it gives you the ability to go out. Ooh, Olin wants to pick a fight with us. So I know Olin doesn't have smoke, so we're going to pick a fight. Well, this will be a fight I'll take. I'll take this fight all day. Now let's take a look at the guns here. I'm in reverse. Oh, I got teams firing. Look, um, he's he's moving forward now. He's got the green. He's got. Hey, I'm going to lead him now because he's got the full throttle up. Now look at this. This is not a fight you want to pick. Never, ever pick a fight with a Marceau. Come on. Look, he's dead. Look at that French saturation. Taking the fight to the enemy. There it is. Be unpredictable. All right. So we can cap this and we can cap this thing at 32 seconds. All right. We're outside the radar range of the Neptune, so we should be good. I'm going to come forward. Hey, our team is actually supporting us. Who would have thought? Teams that support you. My gosh. It's like so rare to find these days, right? So we're going to start working our way to Bravo or Charlie Cap because we know we got this cap and we'll cap it in 41 seconds. Look, we're doing all the capping here. We're doing all the work, okay? We're spotting, we're tanking, we're killing destroyers. Remember those priorities? Take the cap, torpedo from concealment, spot for the other enemy team. If you find a destroyer, kill it as fast as possible. You have now increased the probability of you winning the game. Notice that we've already killed the destroyer in the first four minutes of the game and now... Actually, it's been three minutes. First three minutes of the game, and now look at look. Let's see how this match turns out. Okay, now that the enemy destroyer is gone, like what's going to happen to the map? And now let's see if my theory holds strong. Does the probability of winning actually increase now? Ohio is actually finally pushing. Holy crap! And a battleship that's pushing. You rarely see that nowadays, right? Okay, we have a radar threat, Cleveland. All right, we got the that cap. Ooh, we get that little fire buff chance of the captain gives you a fire chance increase as well as a flooding increase by taking over a cap. Pretty cool. It's free. Why not? We're not going to go ahead and take Charlie because that's our job, right? We're supposed to cap. Look at this. Napoli running in the back and Wami one in the back. Iowa running away. Wow. What a fun and engaging game these big ships are playing for us, right? Again, proves my theory of why I think these uh, teams nowadays are obsolete. I don't know. 
But having this destroyer, look, but my team, so they're actually pushing up a little bit more than they would if I didn't have a destroyer here. Like me being the destroyer player, leading from the front, pushing the objective, pushing the, the, the tension, the momentum is actually helping my team out a lot. Cleveland has a 10 kilometer radar, I believe. Yep, yeah, I think it's 10 kilometers, right? Or is it nine? Nine, so we're too safe. We're safe. So we're just going to stay. Like, he's between us and the island right there. I know that he can't fire. Even if he pops his radar, he can't shoot at us, so we're okay. Oh, and he goes down. Way to go, Stalingrad. All right, so Stalingrad. See, cruisers taking out other cruisers. Great. You help your destroyer players so much out by doing that, taking out other radar cruisers. Why don't you do that? All right, good job. Wow, Massachusetts actually being bold there, taking the fight to the enemy. Ooh, Stalingrad gets torped. Wow. Ouch. Iowa's going down for the count, and Iowa goes down. Way to go, Iowa. Uh, we're in the radar of the Brisbane. Brisbane has 12-kilometer radar. That's bad. That's scary. Look at the size of the 12-kilometer radar Brisbane. Man. We shouldn't have pushed too far out. We're just going to hold right here. We may have to help our other team out because we lost. Did we lose our destroyer? No. The other destroyer is what? Where is he at? Oh, the Akazuki. So let's go help our other destroyer player out. Let's go help him out. Just yeah, reversing, being safe. There should be no threat. Closest threat right now is in this direction. It's probably the Brisbane. So let's go hunt this Shimakaze player down. I'll, watch, I'll, I'll just prove a point. Let's let's go kill the other. Let's focus on... We've already capped everything. Like, I've done my entire... What more can I do? I can't cap anymore. Uh, I could try... out. Al Alpha is already oversaturated with enemies. So let's go hunt down the Shimakaze player. So let's go hunt him down and prove my point that, hey, killing the other Shimakaze player... Or the other short player increases probability of win, right? Who's launching torpedoes out there? I'll tell them I'm coming to help them. All right, let's see if we can help this team. Meanwhile, while we're on our way to uh, this side of the map, why don't we just blow up as many ships as we can on the way to downtown. Torpedoes are crap on this thing. Okay, torpedoes on the Marceau, only nine kilometers, and they're okay for that close engagement. So not really a torpedo ship. It's really focused on the guns. Like we said, the highest DPM in the game uh, for destroyer players. Torpedoes reload pretty long. Uh, nine kilometer radar, 60 knots, not the greatest. Depth chargers are okay, drop eight, whatever. Oh, yay, we got radar. Who cares? Come on, shoot at me. Why don't we blow up this guy? Oh, might as well blow up this guy since we're in range. We're already radar, might as well. What is an Imparanga? Like, tell you, you need a literally a PhD to play this game because I have no idea what these new ships are these days. Look at the DPM on this thing. This thing's awesome. Look, he's like we're we're drawing fire from the uh, battleship. That's what we want to do. We started more fire. See, we're also as fire starter. Really great for a destroyer. Oh, nice! Akazuki's laying smoke for us. That's awesome. Say thank you. All right, he pretty much does. Let's go hunt down the. Um, let's go hunt down the Shimakaze here. Ooh, I have an idea where he's at. There he is. He's right there in front of me. So let's go ahead and kill him. Imparanga is pretty much dead, almost, so why not hunt this guy down? We've got the engine boost, which causes us to go to 55 knots, so we definitely can chase down. Chase down. Oh, Vladi Vostok's over here. Neptune, Cleveland go down. We're still in this game. Let's see if we can hunt down this Shimakaze player. Okay, we cannot take the Vladi Vostok on our own. There it is. There he is. All right, so now I'm going to turn away because I know his torpedoes do a significant amount of damage. There are the torpedoes I talked about. That's all Shima players can do nowadays. Oh, we're dead. See, we had to turn away in that way, but you kind of understand, man. That was my bad on that, but yeah, I already knew he's going to launch his torpedoes, but we had to hunt him. I didn't realize he was going to be that close. But yeah, Marceau is still awesome. I mean, just look at the look at the battle impact we had right there. Just blowing up everybody on the, the Delta side, taking over the cap, and we should win this game. So, yep, that's pretty much it. We did, we, hey, we did our job. We absorbed a lot of damage and we kept them at bay. So, 
Yep, we'll call it a win. So you see what the Marceau, the play style the Marceau is, very fast, very high-speed gunboat, RPF, you can hunt down almost all destroyers. Uh, me, I should have nosed into the, um, yeah, I actually learned a good lesson there. Instead of, if I was that close, I should have turned right and then caused him to have to turn left into me, and that would have just been a little bit more. I think I was in the turn already, and that just caused me to throw my game off right there. But anyways, yeah, lesson learned. No, not every play is a good play. All right, so I learned a very good lesson there, guys. Uh, so if you see a Shimakaze like that, turn into him and keep nose in. It's harder to torp that way. And the whole idea is to keep it as hard as possible to torp. And I hate Shimakaze players for that reason. It's just like, oh, all I have left is torpedoes. All right, we did the Marceau uh, tier nine. We already did that. Let's go look at Alvaro de Bazan. Okay, I think there was a buff on this. So let's take a look at that one. You already have this ship. Yeah, I know. Alvaro de Bazan. All right, I built this thing for just basic, uh, I haven't ranked up the commander, just basic guns and uh, RPF. So what is my next point going to be? It's really just the maintenance like they talk about or incoming fire alert, whichever. So this is just a basic destroyer. I mean, it just has smoke and the burst, the gimmick is the burst fire that the whole Spanish line uh, kind of does or Spain or Spanish. Yeah. All right, so what are we facing against? A good per a player always analyzes the battlefield first, and then we'll figure out what we're going against. Not many radar crews, only one, right? But we do have a lot of um, destroyers here. Yamagiri, Torpedo, Torpedo Gearing, Gearing, Daring, Torpedo Boats, Gunboat Daring, and a Groningen is also the Friesland, which is a gunboat as well. I don't care about the battleships. We can usually just wait at the end of the map anyways because they're in the back. So... Um, all right, so let's see how we can play this. I am going to guard my tromp okay so we're gonna like i said i i start doing this now i actually just look for the the closest destroyer player and keep him alive so his concealment's way better than mine like look the, the tromp has 5.9 concealment so I don't, so the concealment on this is not bad. It's 6.2, but it's not the greatest. Like there's definitely a lot of destroyers out spot. You see, look, 5.6, 5.6, 5.6, 6.0. We only outspot the uh, um, Gronigan. We have 6.2. So <laughs> we are not the best concealed thing out there, but we do have, like I said, engine boost that lasts about two minutes. You got the smoke screen that lasts eh, 97 seconds. You got the, here's the gimmick rare burst fire. So the dispersion goes down by 10%. Um, not I think this ship is okay. They had to buff the dispersion because it, I was just missing so many shots in this thing. So I did not enjoy it as much. And I, I still think it's okay. It's just the gimmick is really just the burst fire, honestly. And the guns reload at 4.6 seconds. So you get four sets of them. So this is another ship I like because of the four, four sets of guns thing. But look, 135 mil, the pin 23 mil, standard-ish. 825 meters per second and five good fire chance. So really is the gimmick is just use the burst fire. Look at the burst fire. Reload 17.6 seconds to reload your every shot. So not as good as the Johnston where every, what, seven seconds it's encouraged for you to use it because it's a better reload. But honestly, 4.6 seconds is not bad for what you can do just without the burst fire. So that's kind of what I kind of do with that. And let's see here. I'll give him some information here. Yeah, he's over there. That's where the bad guys are at. All right, so just covering my uh, my Tromp here. Tromp is that airstrike destroyer uh, Dutch. It just drops the new 12-kilometer airstrike buff, so that's pretty good. So we'll, we'll actually take a look at the Tromp in a bit. It's another coal ship. Oh, we can launch torpedoes. They go out to 13 and a half, I believe, right? So we can actually do these as preemptive. Yeah, let's see here. Torpedoes go out to 13 and a half. So you can see the outer ring here. Look how far out it goes. 13 and a half. So what am I doing? Ooh, so destroyer is now moved over here now. So again, giving situational awareness. That's why it's so good so you don't get spotted. Uh-oh, I gotta put the engine boost here. I don't wanna get caught in these torpedoes. Ooh, man, that was tough right there. There's some dodging for you right there, ladies and gents. So that was pretty rough right there. Keeping the tromp in front of me so he can spot. There's the Gronigan. So let's do a burst fire because he's probably gonna pop smoke right away, right? And here's the burst fire. Let's see how much damage you can do on the burst fire. Oh, he slapped. Oh, man, that's why I hate doing that.
Oh, see, this is exactly why I hate the burst fire so much sometimes. He got ganged, man. I'm sorry. Man, that burst fire should have taken out the Gronigan. Tromp is taking a beating. Oh, man. What can I do? I can't do anything. I can't help. I can't heal him. He's dead. Ah, crap. All right. We're going to have to wait for the Gronigan to come on a smoke because he's got a five kilometer hydro and we don't. So we'll torp him right here. Sometimes I hate this. You got to play conservative because we have no radar. We have no other spotting. We don't have hydro. We don't have anything. So the, again, the gimmick on this ship really is the burst fire. And if you miss, you're screwed. And I, said, I didn't realize he would slam on the brakes that hard. And we're just going to wait till he pops out because we outspot him. So why not just wait? Sometimes it's just patience that wins the game, you know? It makes for boring gameplay, I know. If I had hydro or radar or something, I'd totally rush this guy. Where is he firing from? He's right there. Okay, so he left the smoke. RPF just showed he left the area. And this is just standard map, so there's no point of rushing anything. There's no objective to cap, really, except to capture the flag main point. But honestly, to rush to my death is not really worth it either. So Now, I do like the third turret. It's 360. Lucy, I would have died right there had I rushed. Libertad has got the best seconders in the game as of right now. So we're just going to kind of linger and spot for our team right now. We don't have any uh, tactical advantage. Third turret is the 360 turret, which is good. The fourth turret has to go swing all the way around. Holy cow, is he still firing from smoke? Oh, he is. Let's see if we can catch him off guard. There he is. All right, let's use a burst fire this time. Maybe we can get him this time. All right, we did it. That actually worked. That's the burst fire gimmick right there. Yeah, that was the burst fire gimmick. That's all we could do. Now I got to pop smoke and get out of here. So that was that was that one engagement. We took out another destroyer. So actually, we did a good job of just eliminating a destroyer on a flank. That's one down, one to go. All right, so closest threat right now, analyze the battlefield. Something is right here. So see, Libertad was the closest target, so it switched. So about 13 and a half kilometers. So he, the other next target is probably around here. That's probably the gearing right there. So we're going to have to help our team out right that. We took a lot of damage right there. Potential damage they had. We had 500,000 shot at us. So that is good in the sense that we distract a lot of our the enemy team right there. But, man, we took a pain beating. Now, I do like the health pool. 30,000 HP, very, very good. Uh, I do like that sense. I mean, I mean, talking about gearing starts with about 22,900-ish. Like, what, what does a gearing start with? Like, totally not fair right there. 23,400 <laughs> against a 30,000 HP destroyer. So you're already at a downside. Yeah, sometimes it gets stuck on the mini map for some reason. So we're gonna go out there. All right, so we have the gearing somewhere right here. Nobody spy. See, this is why it's so important for destroyer players to stay alive. Because now my my team has no spotting on the western flank here. So guess what I have to do? I have to actually move up and look at targets, find targets for my team to shoot at. Otherwise, there's battleships are gonna just get bored and sit in the back. Nothing to shoot at. So I tor torpedo. I mean, sorry. That's why destroyers are so important. And there he is. All right, I'm going to burst fire and. Come on, shoot. Look at all that damage we got dead. Ouch. Come on, fire one more time. Ah, we got blasted by an Iowa. Where's my team? See, this is why exactly I hate sometimes when the team is just sitting behind an island. Let me take a look at this guy. Where is he doing? Okay, you're behind an island. No support there. And you're way over here. 
So yeah, Battleship gameplay in 2024. So yeah, we did our best. We, we destroyed it. So you saw the gimmick there. That was pretty much the gimmick. Uh, obviously, it doesn't outspot many destroyers. It, uh, it shoots pretty quickly, the burst fire. Uh, it has the torpedoes that go out to 13 and a half. You see my torpedoes are still going out there. Do they do that much of a damage? I didn't get one torpedo hit. So in the age of, you know, a lot of hydro and spotting nowadays, it's difficult. But do I like it? It's it's okay. It's not like there's some special thing other than, you know, the burst fire. And it's really just that slow, methodical gameplay. So that's that's what I think of the bazaar. I think it's it's okay. Is, is it worth it? I mean, it depends on what you want to spend your coal on. But again, I, I don't think it's like, I don't play it that often. So if that tells you something, the fact that I don't play it often uh, should tell you a lot right there. But it's, it's interesting. It's fun. So let's play the Tromp now. So this is the next ship that was in the line. So we'll take a look at the Tromp uh, now with the new buffs and everything. So this is purely focused on range and gunfire uh, 6.6 .6. now you can get this down if you play concealment you can get this down to 5.9 so it's okay to concealment or 5.8 i believe 5.8 5.9 ish so the concealment on the trump is great but what is it good for it doesn't have many torpedoes it has one set of three on each side the guns are mediocre i mean they're big caliber guns that shoot long range like ragnar elbing kind of that style gameplay so very very big caliber guns and i've tried to go dd brawling on this thing but i just keep failing at it so much with the tromp because it i don't think the guns are either one either fast enough or or impactful enough to do the amount of damage you're required to eliminate a destroyer right off the bat without taking a return fire in the same process it doesn't have any heals although it does have a lot of hp but you just saw that last game with the bazan uh, I had 30,000 HP, but if your team's not there to support you and you're getting blasted, I mean, I got just hit by an Iowa battleship, so. So I guess battleships are uh, somewhat useful. Um, <laughs> to counter my argument, battleships, when they get that one magical moment to launch a salvo from long range, uh, that's good uh, for them. Bad for me. And now I wish I, I don't think I had incoming fire lore. Maybe I was too busy focusing on the gearing to even uh, imagine that, but. Hey, that was my bad. I didn't pay too much attention to somebody else shooting. I mean, I should have slammed on the brakes to turn it in. All right. So let's take a look at how Tromp plays these days. So I'm playing this now, and I find I find that I, I'm more effective right now uh, being a long range, just staying out of the range. With the 12-kilometer uh, drop, airdrop now, it seems a little bit more comfortable to play at range. This thing only has 28,000 HP, but still a lot more than most of the other destroyers out there, like a Shimakaze and Summers. Yeah, definitely I have more than the Summers. Yeah, 21,300, 21,900 Shima. So I have a lot more HP. The guns are pretty strong. 4.3 second reload, not my favorite. 150 caliber guns, though, that pen 30 mil, which is great. But 900 meters per second coming out, fire trends 11%, very, very strong caliber gun. So I think it's more focused on a gun build. The torpedoes are okay. They go out to 12 kilometers, just like the airstrikes go out to 12 kilometers. So anything within 12 is susceptible. I do get a lot more hits on the torpedoes than I would think I would, going 71 knots with a 6.8 second reaction time, and they pack 15,000 damage. So pretty darn strong. And you got, of course, got the engine boost that only lasts a minute. Nah, it increases your speed. But see, you're really slow. 35 knots. What's the max speed? Yeah, 35 knots max speed. Not the fastest. So the engine boost only lasts one minute, as opposed to like Marceau and Clubair's last four minutes. <laughs> and defensive fire is trash anyway. So that's why you need the defensive fire. AA, I, I haven't seen it work really. I think that the AA is really crappy. Let's see what do the AA guns do. Yeah, only 301 continuous damage. Not even flat clouds. That, that tells you how bad the AA is on this thing. Do I recommend the Trump? For attacking destroyers and everything, this is literally an HE spamming uh, destroyer. If you like that style of gameplay, go for it. For hunting DDs, not the greatest. And the, if you like the airstrike gimmick, that that's pretty much all people buy this thing for, um, my personal opinion. The torpedo, look, here's the torpedoes. Yay, they go out to 12 kilometers. That's it. But at least you can cover something. RPF is showing. Where's my situational awareness? Whoa, where'd my RPF go? Whoa, where's my RPF? Did I turn RPF off? Something is wrong here. Huh. I have no idea where my RPF... Oh, wow. All right, I'm going to get out of Dodge here. I got spotted. Holy crap. I'm getting hit hard here. Let's take the fight to the enemy. Let's take out the Shimakaze player as best we can. All right, look at these guns. Here are the guns for you. That's how they are. Very long reload.
Now when they hit, they hit hard. So. Oh, nice. I got a hit. All right. I'm not going to mess around with this because of the fact that the torpedoes just got fired at me. So let's pull back a little bit here. Now the guns do go out and reach a little far out. Smolensk, I'm not going to play with right there. That's HE Spammer right there. So we're going to have to go back into the cap and take it. There's no radar on this side, right? Sirius Minotaur. The only guy is a Buffalo Minotaur. Buffalo is over here. That's the first radar, and that's it. That's the only radar that's uh, not affecting us. So let's go back in and help our team out. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to go out there and cap. We're supposed to be out there and uh, spot and eliminate the other enemy destroyers as well as spot for our team. Notice that nobody's spotting our, on our side. That's me. That's my job. That's why nobody can shoot anything. When nobody's shooting anything, nobody's dying. So take that for what it's worth. I'm going to keep shooting torpedoes and keep that Shimakaze out away from my team. This is actually a nice spot to um, hold at because it's not too risky and I'm staying away. So I'm going to kind of angle out. Uh, hopefully no torpedoes are coming right now at me. This would be a prime time of getting shot at. Schlieflins are on array, as always, another battleship player running away. All right, let's see if we can uh, slam on the brakes here and get out. Of Ooh, nice hit. Schlieflin taking a hit. Where is my RPF? Oh, that's right. I didn't build for it. That's right. I forgot. So I did not take RPF on this because I was figures I'm in the back all the time anyways with this thing, and I'm only going to be shooting and spamming. So there are the torpedoes I was talking about. So angle in. To take your ass backwards. Slim profile, right? Don't want to have a wide body profile for an easy torpedo hit. All right, so who is my next target? Ooh, airstrike. I could airstrike somebody. So airstrike reticle is badder here. Oh, he slammed on the brakes. Of course, he saw the airstrikes coming in. Let's start shooting. Let's have some fun. And we're, here's we distraction. Yep, he fired at us because we're a distraction. Yay, we're firing a distraction. Angle away. Yep, do as best we can. All right, Napoli's secondaries are bad on us because they are sap secondaries. So that's very bad. So we capped the spot for our team. We did our job. Yay. Now let's see if we can go out and take the fight to the enemy again. Let's see if we can airstrike. This is the gimmick right here. Here's the airstrike gimmick that that's what people are playing. So he's rushing forward. Let's do airstrike in front of It's really hard to aim these things sometimes. I don't like them. All right, let's just see what the power of the guns can do right here. Let's see if we can start some fires. Oh, he's going to nail this Yodo. Come on. Yes, we saved him. Thank goodness we killed, we saved the Yodo. Look, his seconders were still aimed at us. He would have rather have shot us uh, with the secondaries than anybody else. That's the power of a destroyer player. Ooh, come on. Can we get this guy? One hit on the, sh the Shimakaze. Any hits you can do on a Shima because he doesn't have any heals just pays off in the dividends. So look at the maneuverability of this thing. This thing is like a tug, man. This thing, <coughs> excuse me, it's not really maneuverable in the sense of other shorts. feels really sluggish. Moving around. So if that's not your style of gameplay, you like... Th again, this thing, it feels like a big gunboat platform. That's a cruiser, okay? It doesn't feel very maneuverable at all as a nimble destroyer. It's really meant to just bombard things. This is an artillery platform if I had to sum it up. Not a very good destroyer hunter. No RPF on this thing that I built for. It really is just designed to shoot and blast um, battleships and cruisers pr primarily. Let's see if we can start some fires on this thing. Okay, Bismarck. See, we get nail guys at range. All right, so we are in the range of Minotaur radar. That's not good. Like I said, the guns reload really, really long. Oh, here we are. Finally, somebody fired us. Oh, everybody's firing at us again. Look, here we go. Slam on the brakes. Slam on the brakes. Oh, we got. Oh, we got. Oh, yep. Of course, everybody's firing at us now. Not good. You gotta go dark now at this point. Let's see if we can launch. It's a slim profile ship. Oh my gosh, we are taking massive damage. Uh, 
Oh, thank God we survived that one. Thank God we took out the, the small ones. See, we've revealed our position, so everybody's firing at us. Nobody's firing at them. Look, we took over a million potential damage right there. That is the power of just literally being that annoying destroyer. So now, since we don't have smoke and we have nothing to hide behind, we have to find cover. Otherwise, we'll just melt to death, right? And that's the whole idea. Your goal is to survive at this point. Now, I, I am not allowed to fire my guns anymore because if I fire, I had to make a rule for that for myself. I, if you fire, you're revealing your position, which is bad because then you die. And then the whole flank caves in. Notice that my team is surviving because I'm still alive right here. If I die, the DMs is pretty much over on this side. So I'm just going to have to do, do air, non-stop airstrikes at this point. So here's that boring gameplay you, you guys want to see with the Trom. It's really, if you can't fire your guns, it's strictly just torpedoes and torpedo damage at this point. Look how slow it's turning. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Defensive fire AA, really not un unuseful really for anything. No AA, so it's pointless. So here we go. Here's, okay, anybody pushing in? All right, we got torpedoes. Again, this is the why Trump is actually fun, the fact that it has all types of weapon systems on board. So it's really interesting in that regard. So let's see, he's going to turn right here probably. We'll do one at a time. Let's see if we can start a fire. Let's see, where do these things land? Did I miss completely? Okay, I got one. And he's slowing down, so we'll get one right there. Again, I don't know what's wrong with this rectangle thing. I can't see the rectangle anymore. Uh, maybe that's like a video card update. I don't know how to fix that other than updating the video card in Windows. Come on, baby. There's the airstrike. Yay, we got a fire. That's all you can really do at that point. Okay, somebody's capping. So the Shimakaze is probably back capping at this point. All right, we got some torpedoes. We got another airstrike ready to go. They reload pretty quick now. Let's see if we can get another airstrike on that guy. Crap, there's another radar. I got to get out of here. I didn't realize the Minotaur is back here. We're holding off the flank as best we can. You get a hit? Yes, we got another fire. Look, I'm telling you how annoying these things are. They're terrible. Please don't radar us. Get out of here. And we throw the torpedoes out. And we are getting out of here. All right. There is three sets of torpedoes. What is that? Uh, that must be from Minotaur? Or Schlieffen. Probably Schlieffen. Notice that nobody's spotting because I'm the only one over here. Um, so let's see if we can nail the Bismarck. Uh, nope. Okay. Torpedoes on the right side are ready. Yeah, this, this this flank folded like crazy, so we can't do much over here. We're just going to have to run away and wait for backup. Torpedoes to port. See, this is why having RPF is so important. Without having RPF, you have no idea where the Shimakaze player is or where their, where their um, threat is right now. So we're being overwhelmed by a flank, so that's all we can do at this point. He's slowing down. Yep. We'll do an airstrike there. And we'll do another airstrike here. Oh, completely missed. He sped up. Dang it. Oh, I should have used him on the Schlieffen. Ooh, this Minotaur's catching up to us. Oh, those torpedoes would have been nice. Oh, man, I'm spotted? Yep, Shimakaze player. Yeah, there's nothing I can do if I'm spotted right here. He's got support. Yeah, Shimakaze outspots you. So that's why it's good to play the um, concealment sometimes. But again, it's a very poor destroyer uh, for hunting destroyers. So uh, that's another game. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, this team flanked and anyway, folded anyways. But there's nothing you can do at that point. But yeah, that's the that's the play style. Just that long range gun build that I built for Trump that it seems to be more effective. But up close and personal, it doesn't seem like it does a very good job. It's so slow. It's a, not as maneuverable. Do I think it's worth it uh, for the coal? It can be if you like that long range spamming and the, the uh, torping. If you want to be that concealed player, it goes in close, but with the age of radar, spot, um, um, Shimakaze players uh, I'll spot you. You got uh, the airstrikes, of course, are good, but radar, you have to be within 12. You still get um, radar by those Soviet cruiser line. The guns, the turrets are very slow, but they do pack a wallop. But again, nowadays, a 30 mil pen, is it really effective nowadays? It can be for the light cruisers, uh, bigger. But you got to get up close and personal hit. That's why I built for long-range gunning, gunboating. 
But you can see right there, if dude, everybody wants to shoot you because you're literally the guy that's so important on the team. That's why I say destroyer players are so important. I'm glad that everybody shot at me. Thank God you take out the destroyer player, you win the game. So right there, you could see just uh, the effective uh, role of uh, the Tromp and what it does. Do I recommend it? I think it's fun for the airstrike long-range gameplay. Do I want it to play for a more effective, competitive? No, not really. It's not as uh, enjoyable nowadays with the age of uh, radar, spotting, and everything like that. It's slow. It's not a maneuverable. It's really it's just spamming. You need something islands or smoke to hide behind. It doesn't have smoke on its own. you got to have it support. So is it worth it for the, 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 the coal? Up to you guys. I, I think it's okay. It's not the greatest. So we played Sherman. We played Marceau. Marceau was probably the most fun game we had today. Uh, Bazan, that burst fire gimmick, you saw how it plays. Tromp, you just saw how we shot right there. Hayate, I did a video on Hayate. Right? Let's take a look at it. It's that, that kind of the mixture of a, a gearing and a, um, I'm sorry, a uh, Haragumo and a uh, Shimakaze. So we'll put, um, yeah, this is more of that Hunter DD gunboat roll. So let's take a look at how it goes. Yeah, so we're getting a lot of losses here. I mean, there's only so much you can do as a store player. Um, I did the best I could to spot, to cap, to... Now, the Trump was a bad... That last game, Trump was a bad destroyer, hunter, killer. I mean, I could do more in a small one or... Um, I would say, what's another good one? What's another good hunter, killer? Marceau, you saw I tried. I made a mistake there. So always make a mistake, learn from it, right? Uh, okay, so right here, what's the matchup? Uh, we have a lot of battleships, no carriers, thankfully. The, what are the radar threats to us? Stalingrad has that 12-kilometer radar, so remember that. Baltimore has the 10-kilometer, I believe. Yep, 10-kilometer. 10, 10 That's our threat right now. Shimakaze, Shimakaze carrying. So we're not too worried about the destroyer uh, role. We don't have any hunter killers. And this is arms race, so you can play a little conservative here. Just go for the, um, as a destroyer player, go for the power-ups, right? So that's the arcade gimmicky of the, the game. Now, what does this thing have? Concealment, 6.1. Not bad. It's like kind of that standard 6.0 6 range. Below 6.0 is very good. 6.0 is okay average. Anything above 6.0 is like you're going to get outspotted by majority of things. Torpedoes reload a long time. I don't build for them, so long reloads here. 12-kilometer radar. Or sorry, 12-kilometer range with uh, 67 knots, 9.5 reaction time. So people spot this thing pretty far out. We're going to go for the health pool. That's our job. And I don't throw your ship away, of course. They're going for it. Smoke and engine boost, basic. And of course, you got the reload booster. So we still have two torpedo racks that shoot five each right there. So 10 total. You can launch another 10. So that's 20 total in the water. So not bad. I usually save those for uh, kind of like, oh, I have an opportunity to shoot. Let me get that reload that I just shot uh, or that rack of torpedoes I just shot. I need that reload right now to blast people. Overall, what do I think of the Hayate? Uh, I don't play it as much. I don't like the Japanese destroyer line outside the Haragumo, but it's a good kind of that gearing play style where you've got the guns, you've got the torpedoes, you've got the decent amount of concealment where you can kind of play a little bit more conservative as opposed to just more playing the objectives. The guns are there to defend, you against, defend yourself against whatever comes your way, but 3.3 second reload, so eh, not the greatest reload. Now, they do pen 21 mil, 950 meters per second. That's good speed. Anything above 900 meters per second is good. 127 millimeter gun, so basic guns right there. So this is like a gearing. Uh, this, is, this is my thought. It just plays like a gearing to me. Oh, thank, thank God. I have RPF again. So RPF showing some threat in this direction. So keep the guns facing. Gun church traverse is fast, actually. It's not bad. Oh, Stalingrad. So we do have the radar in our threat area. So there's a Shimakaiser there. I know one's right there. The other Shimakaiser there. So we're probably going to go up against a gearing. He outspots us. So here we go. Let's take a look. Stalingrad's behind. Oh, Baltimore radar. So we got to get out of Dodge here. We're going to use our engine boost. He's probably going to pop the radar because he's spotted. So we're going to anticipate that. Let's not go for it. So they have a lot of radar coverage on the heel buff. So we're not going to push it. We're going to wait. Nice. Good shot. We don't want to take, take a shot and reveal our position just yet. Let's hold off on that. Shimakaze, one player goes down. Okay, let's get let's get a little let's build some distance uh, away from the Shimakaze. I'm oh, sorry, Stalingrad. So he's Benign Island, so he won't be a threat. Here comes that gearing. There's the gearing. It's a it's a fight now. So we have the numbers. We can we can do this. Even though he gets a buff, let's take him out. It's a one on one gun engagement. So you can take a look at the guns. See how are they how are they reacting to you?
I'm gonna nose into him because I know the torpedoes are coming. Oh, thank God. Dang, Columbo. Good God. All right, we'll play another. Yeah, way to go, YKO. I think I played with you before. Yeah. Okay, so we did our job. We tried to cap, and let's play another one just to give you guys a better. Uh, that was too quick. We at least took out the gearing. We helped out te our team by just destroying another destroyer player. I don't know. That was too aggressive. I mean, man, it's just so tempting to go have fun, you know? Sorry, I like having fun. I like doing those destroyer engagements. So we won that destroyer engagement. Unfortunately, his team actually has uh, support, so they actually like to shoot. Hope you guys are doing well out there. It's a nice day today. What is it? Yep, Wednesday. Yep, hope you guys are doing well. Just having fun playing a little World of Warships. Just had lunch and uh, checking out some coal ships. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a new format. I was just trying out. Just, you know, why not? Just play some games, see how I play. Again, I'm not the greatest player. You notice I'm dying just as much as anybody else. I'm just having fun doing it. Um, and I get onesie, twosie games here and there that are just fun. And I just do the basic things I can do. Just go out there, cap, spot, kill destroyers, and uh, just stick to those basic principles and normally just wins the game. So we'll, we'll take a look at how the games ended up at the, after I'm done with all these. All right, let's try it again. Let's go for Delta Cap, right? So find the lightning. Let me protect him. As you can see right there, the lesson is, man, you when you get into those objectives, I mean, it's so, it's so hard sometimes. Like you got to just know how to dodge and avoid shells. It requires an art and a skill to learn about dodging all those incoming fire. But you can only dodge so much. I mean, we mitigated the Stalingrad threat as you saw back there. The Baltimore, at least we got out of radar range. But outside of that, there's only so much you can do with that. And I'm just going to attack this selection. And I hate carriers. Hey, guns. There's some flat clouds. We do get some flat cloud support, but we're helping our lightning out here as much as we can. All right. All right. I'm just covering my lightning. See, remember what I told you guys. I, I said, look, I find that my destroyer player and I just stick with them and just keep them alive. And usually if you keep the destroyers alive, unlike my other teammates, um, you're going to win the game. You have a higher probability of winning. All, All right. Let's kill this destroyer. Let's see. Wait. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. When I get spotted, then I open, open up on the Lexington. See, he can't do an airstrike on us because it just waited to the very last minute. It's very difficult to do that. And we're blowing up a lot of planes. Ooh, all his planes are going up. All right, so we, so we avoided that right there. Took a shot as well. Nevsky tried to fire at us, and I'm just trying to keep my lightning alive. See, just slow, methodical gameplay. We're not in a rush. We're just here just to figure out, take a find out the lay of the land. We have a sh Schlieffen over here. We're going to keep our lightning... He's trying to blow that up. Oh, there's the gearing. Hey, thanks for the smoke. Nice. We get spotting from the carriers. That's why I hate carriers. It doesn't make the destroyer gameplay any more enjoyable, even for the other enemy team. Oh, we got one hit. Nevsky's 12 kilometers is going to suck for us, so we're going to have to get out of this. Yep, here we got radar. I knew it. Engine boost on. Let's get out of dodge. Oh, crap. Now we're stuck in the radar because of these torpedoes. Gearing torpedoes. There we go. So all we can do is just hold our position right here. Take fire as long as we can. It's going to have to outlast this radar. Sometimes he's got to survive. Okay. Torpedo planes are coming in us from the rear. Oh, he's turning. Look at that.
Why not reload my torpedoes? Let's see. Somebody please nail this uh, broadside Nevsky. My gosh. Lightning goes down. I couldn't protect him. He was just trying to push the objective. There's only so much you can do. All right. Shimakaze's coming in. Let's see if we can nail this guy. I can't get the lightning. Let's why not shoot uh, this guy. So we're doing our job here. We're capping the objective here. They're spotting for the rest of our team. But where's our battleship player? Look at that. There's another battleship player leaving the area, Iowa. Napoli at least is trying to push, but with no support and with the carrier, there's only, there's only so much you can do as a one player versus three. Look, you have a Nevsky, Shima, Gearing, Schlieffen. Yeah, you're trying to go up against the world by yourself. It's difficult. I mean, you're, you're not giving yourself advantage. Whoa, something's spotting? What? Oh, here we go. Oh, we got another Gearing. Let's see if we win this engagement. Nobody's spotting for us here, so we cannot pop smoke. Yeah, it's it's three on, it's three on two here. It's not not worth it. Yeah, so we have to bail. There's not nothing you can do. Look, I'm by myself, carrier and a Napoli. So it's me, one gearing versus Shima versus Nevsky. Yeah, not fair. So we can't win. You got to pick and choose your battles. So we got to egress the area. Live to fight another day. Yeah, it's really boring these days. I don't know if it's just the way the maps are these days or the games and matchmaking and gear and the makeup. So we'll see if we can hold. I'm sorry, it's going to make boring gameplay here. Feel free to speed through this or skip this on your YouTube. Like I said, I don't know if you guys can speed up if you have the base account. I have premium, so I can fast forward through uh, videos. Yeah, so what do I think about the Hayata take? It's like a gearing. Like, I just phased the gearing, and he was the basic thing as well. Gunboats, uh, or basic guns, torpedoes, and smoke. Smoke and, you know, torpedo uh, engine boost. That's pretty much it. I mean, that's the basics of just this uh, gearing. I always call it gearing uh, gameplay. Because, I mean, essentially, that's the basics of what a destroyer does. Torpedo, gunboat, cap, spot, uh, attack other destroyers when necessary. And uh, on occasion attack submarines here and there but i hope you guys are enjoying it i mean i'm just playing around seeing the cold ships how are they today what do i like about them again this is why i don't play hayate too much uh it is uh there's not an advantage gimmick that gives me like a small and radar or a black radar or uh, hydro at least like a z52 six kilometer radar i mean it has to have something for me to detect the other guy uh for me to work because i gotta be on my own i mean what am i supposed to do i'm on my own over here look the destroyer killed himself napoli ran into a save i was ran away uh, yeah, so why don't we go on the middle, down the middle now? Let's see, we can go down in the middle and kill and go for Charlie. Maybe that'll work. Oh, another Nevsky radar. Shoot, I gotta get out of here. Nobody will fire at this guy. Come on. Thank you. Thanks for firing. Wow, overpins. That did nothing to him. Yamato, he goes down. Yay. So I have a threat here. We have a threat here. The threat indicator showing that Nevsky is the closest target. Let's just fire for fun. Hopefully two minute reload. By the time I get down to Charlie, it'll probably be reloaded by then. Let's go faster. I'm getting too slow for this. 41 knots speed. So engine boost gets you up to 41. So okay speed. Not the greatest. Keep our guns facing in the threaded direction. So in case we get engaged, uh, we can shoot back. Yay, Kansas goes down. See, sometimes if you just stay alive as a destroyer player, you win the game for your team that way too. Sometimes just the threat of a destroyer is scary enough. Okay, something is behind us right here. That's where another threat destroyer is. Lexington's coming back for more. Maybe we'll go down to Charlie and then circle back around and get Delta. Maybe that'll be our... Again, this is all you can do sometimes as a short player. Just go around capping the points. So it makes for slow gameplay for you sometimes, but it's still engaging and impactful. I like the fact that you can impact a game so much. Missouri's got that 9-kilometer radar. That's just be having the pH level idea of what's going on because I play it. Yeah, 9.5-kilometer radar. Sorry. 
Yen. PhD level required to play this game. Yep, there's a radar popping up right there. Nine and a half. Closest target right now is a Missouri switched over. So the closest target to me is ten and a half kilometers. So we know we're not within the range of uh, destroyer right now. Schlieffen is there. So Missouri is still cl the closest threat. Somebody shoot at this guy, please. We're not going to fire because we're going to take shots from the Schlieffen, which we don't need right now. Hey, we're spotting for our team. Way to go. Missouri's dead. All right. And the closest threat is the Schlieffen. Yeah, so this is how I did gameplay. Do I like it? It's a lot better than the Shima, I'll tell you that. I mean, if you want to be that Japanese uh, torpedo kind of role, then I think the, the Hayate is great. It's got the basic 12-kilometer torpedo range. It's just like a kind of like um, 12 kilometers, that standard range, I would say. Um, gearing obviously goes out to 16.5. Shimakaze goes out to 12. Or if you build for those torpedoes, it go out to 20. Nobody uses those. But, yeah, this is pretty much what you do. It's just an overall just good destroyer. I mean, it's just like any other ge gearing play. Now, it doesn't have heals, but it has 24,300 health, so not bad. Okay, we spot the Lexington. Yay, what's our job again? Spotting. So we're capping. We're spotting. We're running around, hunting down destroyers. Hopefully, we find them. Uh-oh, carrier's coming for us. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? He's looking, and A goes on. Okay, make sure you stay perpendicular to his bombs because he's going to drop them in a straight line. Slam on the brakes last minute. Miss. Come on, miss. Oh, look at all that damage. and a, a, Look at the power of what one guy can do. All right, launch preemptive torps that way. We capped the point anyway, so whatever. All right, stay perpendicular. Come on, baby. And switch. Last minute switch. And, ooh, bupkis. He only got 3K. Thank goodness. That's World of Warships in the nature today. All right, so we capped as much as we could right there. We have a fellow Shimakaze player uh, coming to help us out. Now, if we see another uh, airplane attack, we don't need to uh, press it too much. We can literally just stay nose in and then smoke up. I shoot that carrier, please. And we are... Oh, crap, he spotted me. Okay, we're going to smoke up here, okay? Okay, smoked out. Okay, he's attacking the other Shima player. Okay, he gave up. So we can go attack the carrier now. Oh, thank goodness. The carrier's almost dead. So shots out. Yep, shots out. Please hit him. Please hit him. Please hit him. Come on, baby. Hit. Boom. Good shot. Okay, we are not messing around with the bombers again. Smoke up our teammate. Ooh, can our guns reach? Oh, just barely. All right, so we're just playing chicken right now. His planes get to fly around for free. And meanwhile, we're just waiting. So boring. Hey, this is uh, World of Warships uh, aircraft carrier gameplay. Notice that the only guys left on the enemy team are the destroyers, and they're the only ones left alive. I tell you, they're very powerful. Okay, he's coming back for more. Here we go. Does he know where we're at? Okay, he doesn't. All right, we're out of here. Ah, oh, he almost got us. All right, turn the AA off, and we're out of the smoke. Oh, he found us. Stay at an angle. All right, slam on the brakes, and hard right. 
All right, thank God. All right, that was the last drop. All right, let's go attack. Finally, the carrier's gone. 28,000 damage to a carrier. Holy crap. Look at that. How many planes have we damaged? So we win this game in four minutes, so there's really no need to push too, too hard. Now look at the power what the destroyer can do. A destroyer can literally hold Bravo, but he's dead, and the gearing's probably dead at this point. Come on, kill the gearing, please. Okay, we can go take the Nevsky on now. Hey, that's what happens if you survive. You survive the game, you win. So not the most engaging gameplay. It's, I mean, it's got decent guns, 2.7. Gearing goes down, yay. And when you got the, the, the two-minute long reload torpedoes, if you build for it that way, that could, I didn't build for torpedoes, really, just more of that just gunboat action. If you like the gunboat action of a Hayate but still like torpedo roll of a Shimakaze, then Hayate definitely is worth it. Uh, but for me, I don't see any too many gimmicks on the Hayate to allow me to want to go to be that aggressive hunter killer dd roll i like being the gunboat destroyer i want to use my guns go blow up sh uh, stuff and sh uh, ships uh it's the smoke farming from smoke you saw right there smoke came in handy to just heal your concealment and move maneuvers so yeah man how long have we been playing here so i mean it's been an hour i hope this video is the last too long my gosh this is a long video Sorry, I'll put chapters in it if you guys want to skip forward and um, just get past all this. I just got to end the game so we can get to the next video. So do I recommend it? Yeah, if you like the Shimakaze playstyle, absolutely. Hayati is pretty powerful, a lot better than the Shimakaze um, for the torpedo. Now, torpedoes obviously get three racks on the Shima. Hayati get two, but you get the guns for it. So if you like that mixture of a gearing uh, kind of mixture of role play so that you can actually go up against gearings, as you saw earlier, then, yeah, Hayate is good. Uh, I don't like Shimakaze because it's just too hard to play uh, for the guns. I like guns more than torpedoes. I'm not a gun a gunboat main guy. Or, sorry, DD. I'm sorry, torpedo guy. Oh, these torpedoes look nice. See, here's Shimakaze player again. And Shimakaze gets to go. Good job, buddy. Yeah, I can't play Shimakaze very well. I mean, you guys are better at it than me. Good job. Let me see if I can compliment him. Way to go. Good job on the Shima play right there. All right, good job, Shima. There we go. Good job. All right, let's take a look at another ship. What was the last one here? Okay, so the last destroyer, I believe is Kabarovsk. Okay, let's take a look at Kabarovsk. And one of my favorite spamming ships. So I built this thing for, I want to take a look at the captain build here, for long range, just sheer gunboating. And this has the legendary mod on it, okay? Yeah, this has the legendary mod right there. So yeah, 10% firing range, better reload, but the ship consume action time minus 20%. So longer heal time, that's okay. We can survive. Let's, let's try it out. All right, so a lot of submarines in this match. So let's take a look at the lineup. You already saw the lineup. Um, a lot of submarines and two destroyers, and we're going to be that annoying destroyer. We're not going to go up against the Vampire, the Yugamo. They outspot us. Look at our, our spotting. It's a, <laughs> our concealment is 8.7, so we're definitely get spotted from the moon. But what our primary goal in the Kabarovs is really just to melt down anything we see right off the bat. So if we spot something, boom. We're not there to go cap yet. Um, we don't have the concealment for that, but look how fast this thing is. The acceleration is incredible. 45.1 knots. I haven't even hit engine boost yet. So what do I save the engine boost for? It lasts a long time, but it's there for juking. I use it for the juke ability of stop starting back and forth. You're going to see how annoying we're going to play this thing, okay? This is an annoying destroyer. So, for you know, uh, 
Disclosure, warning here, is uh, we are going to play the annoying destroyer gameplay role, okay? It's going to go be back and forth, nonstop shooting. We're going to go out there, spot, and then uh, just try to burn everything down. Burn the world down, right? That's what makes this one so enjoyable. It's just kind of relaxing. Sometimes just uh, just go around and, and just shoot. <laughs> Who's our first victim? Come on, somebody's got to be coming up here soon. Wow, nobody? And there's submarines in this game. There's no way I can outspot a 5.4 submarine. No way. I'm the only destroyer over here now, so... I don't know what the submarine player is doing. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, an AFK player. Looks like I'm the only one over here again. Yamato's not going to do anything. What are you going to do, Yamato? You're going to stay back there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hindenburg? Yep, yeah, okay. Prussian. I'm just waiting for backup here. Come on. Anybody else coming over here with me? Torpedoes are not the greatest either. They only go six kilometers, so they're pretty much useless. All right, here we go. Here's our first victim. I already spotted two. Good. Couldn't come at a better time. Look at that. That they missed this. Look at that. We didn't take any damage off his shots. Like I said, annoying destroyer gameplay. See, and it's comfortable because we can hit anybody from this range. This range is incredible. Look, we're hitting them. Starting fires. Look at that range. We're shooting out to 14.8. Look at that. Pretty darn awesome. See, we're pushing everybody back. Yeah, look at that. Suppressing gun power. Now, we're not taking the objective. That's the downside here. We have to disclaimer alert here. We have to just constantly push the enemy out of the cap. Let them cap it first. Ooh, Vampire 2 goes down. That is one less destroyer. Let's see if the statistics work out here. So, obviously, I think a submarine is capping, Charlie. I don't have RPF either, so I have no idea where he's at. Just know he's in the cap somewhere. But, again, we can't do much. I mean, these guys definitely all spot us. Yugamo's there as well. Uh, where's, one submarine's over here. So, definitely somebody just spotted us right there. You can use that to your advantage. He went un, he went dark, so that means we we're undetected. He went behind the island, probably. No idea what's in here. So, torpedoes came out, well, just launched over there. So, probably the Yugamo. Let's see if we can burn down the Republic. Sylvester Stallone. Pretty awesome. Okay, oh, there we go. Illinois. All right, let's shoot the Illinois. Yep, Illinois is firing at us. Did he miss? He missed. All right. Good job. All right, let's see. We fired again. Let's take this Republic on. We can burn down the Republic. Because look at all our battleships. Look look where they're at. Look, look, look where our teams are right here. That's great gameplay, right? So I guess we're just going to have to do our everything on our own now. We'll just burn down the ship ourselves. Notice it's very comfortable to play this thing. We're not going to take on the, uh, Illinois. We're going to take on the... Uh, we're going to start as many fires as we can on the Republic here. There are the shells. Look at that. We're taking up a lot of damage. A lot of fire starting ability. Let's see if we can dra drag this Republic to fire at us. Come on, fire at us. Our goal is members to draw fire too, right? See if we can lead this guy. There you go. Come on, fire at us. Come on. All right, he fired us. Slam on the brakes. Hit the engine boost. Now that he fired us, we know he'll be spotted for a while. Look at that. Look how you can dodge those shells. Look at that incredible dodge of vehicle ability. Come on, just get one more fire. We just need a perma fire. There it is. All right, there's one victim. He's burning down. There you go. Good job. All right, let's see if we can take on another battleship here. Again, if we can't cap, we might as well do the other best thing, which is burn down everybody. Okay, he's behind an island. He's worthless. Republic's in the reverse. Azuma is running back as well. Look at that. All the guys are going to the back. See, that's our job push everybody back and nobody's going to move forward. Great job playing battleships, guys. 
so hopefully that's not below this. All right, Republic's in full reverse, steaming away to the uh, opposite end of the map. That's where the battle is most of the time, right? In the back of the map. Why not? And notice that what we cause our ships to do. They guys said, hey, look, Haberoff's is actually moving the battleships back. Well, why not move forward? Again, see how much impact you can have on the game just by running away, or sorry, pushing everybody away. Yugamo's in there. Oh, wow, full reverse, full going retreating battleships. Great. So now that I know I can secure this objective, we're just going to wait and then push the Yugamo at Bravo. The Cabros is actually a good hunter, killer, destroyer. I mean, it's just so hard to kill this thing. A destroyer going up against a Cabros, just it most likely will not win. But, like I said, anything can happen if you get torped. All right, let's go for the cap. Now we almost capped the spot. Good job, Prussian, for pushing up. You, you got submarine. <laughs> See, the submarine just hunting down the battleship plays. This is why battleship plays non-existent anymore. I mean, what, do you, what is he supposed to do? Yep, doing our job. Capping, spotting, killing the destroyers. Let's go for this Yugamo. I have no idea where he's at. All right, remember, just use the front two guns, okay? They're just as strong. Just don't get full broadside this Yugamo to get torped at. We're about to get spotted right around the corner here. No, he left. Where is this guy? All right, enemy team's in full retreat. Our battleships are also in full retreat, so somehow we're winning. Yeah, this Yugamo is going to run the whole gamut of our team right here. This is why it's good to have RPF sometimes, because I have no idea where he's at. I know he's torping the right crap out of our team, though. I mean, look at this. Look at this gameplay right here. Isn't that fun? I mean, look at our team. A battleship gameplay at the best. So, at least as a destroyer player, I'm capping an objective. Oh, crap. De Boyne, I don't want to be in the radar. Let me get forward here. Yep, we're spotted. I knew it. He's around the corner here. Six, five, four, three. Two, one. All right, let's go hunting. Let's go hunt this Yugamo down. He's somewhere around here. I just He's just torped, so he's right there. Oh, there he is. Hey, we're doing our job. Look, guys, we're doing our job. We killed the destroyer. We did our job. Yay. <sighs> Meanwhile, he's torping the crap out of our team. All right, let's blow this guy up. Let's take on the... Okay, I'm in a safe position right here. Let's just blow it. This is all we do as a uh, Cabros player, guys. Just burn down the world. Let's start a fire on one guy. Maybe that Prussian's a lower health. Maybe I should kill that guy first. Let me get a fire on this Yamato. Why is he not catching on fire? All right, that's enough. We need to switch over to this Prussian. Fine, we get a fire. 
2,000 damage every time. That's pretty powerful. There it is. We took him down. All right, let's so let's blow up the um, uh, let's blow up the Yamato now. Reversing battleship. I've seen it all. There we go. Finally, get a fire going. He's coming forward. All right, we're going to lead him now. He slowly wants to come forward. Yep, there's the green circle. That means he's got the gas pedal forward. This is a comfortable distance right here. This is why the, the, it's so annoying to play Cabros because the distance doesn't mean much now because we're so far away that we can just spam from any direction or any distance right here. And the, the battleships are not going to shoot at you. They're so far away, they're not going to waste their shot. And it's so annoying. Look, we're just throttle juking back and forth. If they do decide to shoot us, we'll just slam on the brakes and move forward again. There's another fire. Somebody fired at us. Yep. The acceleration's incredible, so we're not too worried. There's his juke. Now we, now we play around with the throttles because now he's probably going to lead us. Look at the firepower of this thing. Yeah, we got to keep an eye on who's shooting at you. That's why the, in, the exclamation part indication fire indicator at the top right there is good to know. When you see that thing turn red, change the directions to do something. All right, we killed another one. Now time to burn down. Yep, he fired again. It's full, full forward as well. Watch. Look at that. Look how we just juke that. That's why it's so annoying to play the Kabaros. I'm telling you. Oh, somebody fired. Slam on the brakes. Who fired? Who fired? Oh, Hindenburg. Yep. It's okay. We can burn down. I think we can burn down the Iowa in time to get out of range. Okay. We're going to go forward again. Throw off some more, some more shots. Yep. See, so he just fired. He doesn't know when we're, we're going forward and back. We can do it randomly, you know? So I'm going to go forward full speed. Yep. I'm going to keep going the full speed because he thought we were behind. Look at that. See, look at that. He's going to shoot behind us again. And now we're going to throw it again off again. Now let's see how long it takes him for to go. See, the guns are turning away. That means he gave up. That's good. Up oh, now, you got the Des Moines firing at us now. I think we can melt down in Des Moines. Come on, get one couple more damages there. Just getting there's another fire that we wanted. All right, let's shoot at the Des Moines. See if we can blast this guy. You want to fire at me? We'll fire right back. Iowa goes down. There's one. All right. I got to spot this guy for my team. This game is still neck and neck. Five minutes left. We have to go cap. But there's a Hindenburg and a submarine. We have to kill this Des Moines. Yay. Illinois goes down. Good job. So now we're winning. Now we just blow up ships now at this point. Let me see if I can get this Des Moines to fire. Come on, fire at me. There he is. I could shoot AP right now, but I just want to start fires to get this guy out of my back. See, he's turning at me now. He's going to angle. See, that's why I knew that's going to happen. There you go. Now he's made a mistake. He wants to come forward now. Okay, we're going to do engine boost on. Oh, man, I hit the wrong button. I don't know why I hit the heel. Oh, well, hit me and I'll... At least he hits me. Notice he's distracted towards me now, which means he's not going to worry about other ships coming back on the round. This is why Kabarovs is so annoying to play against. See, look at that. This is why Kabarovs is so annoying. 
We absorb 977,000 damage of enemy fire right there. So that's exactly what you want to do in a cover ops. Draw enemy fire so they don't fire your team. We did 167,000 damage, 14 fires. Need I say more of how this, what this thing plays like? And it's annoying. It's a zombie heal. Look at that. I'll get my health back in 30 seconds. So do I recommend the ship? Absolutely. Freaking lootly. This thing is a devastator on the, the uh, map. This, this destroyer literally just changes games, I'm telling you. It just makes the entire experience terrible for the big ships and the cruisers and so forth. Destroyer players, it's difficult to go against the Kavaros, not impossible, but um, it is powerful. It's still a strong, strong uh, ship to go up against, so you're going to need some heavy firepower to go, at least some help. Kavaros is a juggernaut, like I said. I did a video about it. Check it out. Yeah, so you got to find destroyers that are worth it that have some kind of gimmick that it could, uh, one, enables your survivability, first of all, and then one amount of firepower you can dish out. That's number two. How do you handle destroyers is number three. So those are the three things I look for. Um, I have to be able to do my job as a destroyer player well, like kill destroyers, cap objectives effectively and efficiently, then I'll be able to survive, which is heals. That's why I only pick destroyers majority of the time with heals, because it just it just makes the your mistakes a lot more manageable. Because I make a lot of mistakes. You've already seen me. I've I'm no I'm no good. I'm just like another average player. I take damage, I die, and like everything else in this ship, there's no OP ship because every ship in this game does blow up and die. It's just merely how you use it and actually have the tactics and procedures that you employ at the right moment at the right time. So, yeah, well, here we go. Capping. Now, I have no idea where the submarine's at. Submarine gameplay is so fun. It's just going to drag this game out so, so long and take forever. See, nothing cosmic about this gameplay. It was just, I was running around shooting with my head cut off. I eventually capped one spot, and now I'm capping another, and that's pretty much it. So let me know your thoughts. What do you think of the Kabarov so far? What do you think of any of the videos so far? Like, do you like um, you know, the Hayate? Do you like the Sherman? Do you like the play style of the Tromp? I mean, everybody has a different play style, different uh, modes, and different takes and aspects on it. I, I enjoy listening to both, because, or all of them, because I, I need to know what's... What's the uh, tactic or technique I haven't seen? Or what's a ship that I, I haven't seen employ? I learned how to play a Holland really well by by somebody's comments, by saying, hey, build for torpedoes. Make it super, super fast and difficult, and your DPM will go up. And it's, it's worked really, really well. So definitely, I welcome all comments, whether good and bad. I mean, there, any every comment's a good comment because you get to see a different perspective. Of course, as long as we're respectful of each other, um, I've always said that as well. I'm an officer and a gentleman. I always believe that's the same way which society should be as well. Of course, it's the internet and YouTube. Can't control what you can't control. All you can do is change what you can control. All right, so let's take a look. The Yamato died over here, so he's somewhere over here. All right, I'm spotted, so what does that mean? Huh, 8.7 detection? He could be any direction at this point. Uh, hope, ping, hopefully he pings me. Come on, ping me, buddy. I got 12 depth charges that I have to literally drive over top of you and deliver to you them like a UPS package delivery guy. All right, change some direction here. And he went underwater. Change some direction here. Does anybody see anybody? Oh, torpedoes came out that direction. So there's somewhere out here. Yay, we won anyways. Fun and engaging, right, guys? Submarine gameplay? All right, Cabaros are great right there. 14 of burns of fire. So a lot, a lot, a lot of power right there. Yeah, we did a lot of damage. Let's see what we did. Yeah, I did top three. It's okay. Yeah, 57,000 fires, 101 down damage. We took potential damage like crazy, captured the points, did spotting damage, 73,000 spotting damage. That is incredible right there. That's a lot. And we traveled 100 kilometers. That's crazy. All right, let's take a look at another one. I recommend Cabaroff. Definitely recommend if you got it, especially with the legendary mod that I did a video about uh, already. Check it out right there. Pretty awesome. All right, what's that? What's another? I'm not going to go through the tier nine ones. Um, I, you kind of... I've already seen kind of, I did a video on the black. Take a look at my black video. It's pretty awesome uh, how you can use it in rank these days. But today in super ships and everything, the black, I don't know, just doesn't cut the mustard. Uh, do I recommend it? I don't even get it. Oh, yeah, actually, you can get it. My bad. That's the whole reason we're doing this video. You can get it, but I mean, does it employ very well? I don't know. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, coal ships. Sorry. My bad. Coal ships. 
tier 10, 9. All right, so we did the verdict. What is it? So Nutrishimi kind of plays similar like Kabarovsk. It's got the super heal, low detectability, special repair teams. It's just the DPM, low damage. I don't like that. I would rather play Illusions. Play Illusions if you uh, want to play Nutrishimi. The black, it's a Fletcher with a radar and smoke. Okay, cool. Just go play Fletcher and see how you want to do that. Enjoy it. I've already told you my aspects on these ships right here. I don't like, I don't have a Z44, so I don't like it. I read about it, studied it. It's not that great to me. Halford, just play Fletcher uh, for the, I'm sorry, the, um, uh, the Johnston, which people can't get anymore. Fletcher is a lot better, honestly, in my personal opinion. And I told you to play the Holland for Jaeger. Uh, I like the black. Black is really, really fun. at smoke radar combo. Very, very uh, powerful uh, in that combination. But that's my thought on it. Thoughts on the, the video. Out of all these, which one I think is the best is Marcel. Definitely. Definitely go for Marceau first. It's really so much fun. I enjoy it so, so much. Uh, the rest of these guys, Trump and Sherman and Kabros are HE spammers uh, from long distance range. Hot he plays like a more in, engaged uh, destroyer gearing style play game, style gameplay. Bazan also does kind of that similar destroyer gearing kind of gameplay with the burst fire. And of course, you see the tier nines. I'm not going to play those. The video will be too long. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I'm always looking for constructive criticism as well as to get better and just share ideas. I like you guys out there to share ideas, have fun, and engage in it as well. If you guys see me out there, say hello. And as always, take care and uh, be safe. Cheers.